Hey guys, it's Dave from Curtis Crafts and today I'm doing something a little bit different in that Zeppelin Comics asked if I could paint three totally different figures using only three colors. So basically with this project, the idea is to only use three colors to paint the entire thing. And to start off, I basically make the darkest version of each color I can. For the wizard, I'm going to use a dark blue, for the dragon, a dark red, and for the minotaur skeleton, it's mostly going to be white. But since he's going to be a minion of the dragon, he can have some dark red armor. The reason I'm only using three colors is because Zeppelin Comics is selling a pack of three Bones miniatures, one hero, one minion, and one boss, three randomly selected colors of paint, and a brush to give yourself a fun and interesting challenge to do. It's always nice to have a whole flurry of colors available to you like I do now, but it makes it a little more interesting to limit yourself and try and do it with only three. And that link will be in the description below. Wait, hold on. Is this an ad? Are you selling out, Dave? No, I'm not selling out. I was just asked to... It's okay. I got an advertising deal, too. With over 3 million downloads, you can see why this is the breakthrough mobile game of the century with PC graphics. Shh. What? What'd I do? Shh. We don't do that here. Did you change shirts? Silly robot. There's no such thing as continuity at Curtis Crafts. In the case of the wizard here, I go really, really light on the blue in order to make a really nice highlight kind of on the top of his hat and more towards the higher folds of the fabric on his cloak. The only way I'm able to change the dark or light value in any of these colors is I'm using the wash mixed into the original color to make it darker or mixing in the beige white color to make it lighter. And I'm gradually working my way up in each color till it's almost white in order to make the top highlights for each piece. Now, if you didn't have a white to work with, you could move from red to a blue or say green to a brown, making it gradually more and more bright green as it moved to the top highlight of a cloak or something. And in that case, you'd wanna go as dark with the color as possible. And in the case of this dragon, it needs a little bit more contrast. So I'm mixing up a pink in order to paint the underside of his scales. And varying the colors with more contrast like this makes it a little more interesting, more cartoon-like or more comic book art, and gives it a level of interest. Do you like comics? Yeah, you could say I've read a couple, but I think we should get back to explaining how we paint this stuff. One of the difficulties I had with the wizard and a couple other parts here was trying to make a brown for his staff, and I wound up being able to make what seemed more like a dark purple, and you just have to kind of convey that you intended for it to be brown, and it kind of works out. Back on the dragon, I used the original blue and gradually blended up to white to give him yet more contrast on this mohawk and all the spikes along its body. And for the horns, I make a gray and gradually blend it out to white as it gets more towards the tip of each horn. I use the same white to highlight some of the pink scales and areas on the body. And then I come back with just the pure red and mix in a little bit of white to make it a bit brighter. Moving back to the Minotaur skeleton, I'm using some grays and various other mixtures of white and the wash in order to create a level of interest along the skeleton portion. Once I've finalized all of the color that I'm adding to these miniatures, I go over them with a really heavy black wash, which is the same wash I've been using to mix these colors darker. And then I wipe off the higher areas of each of the miniatures so that it settles only in the recesses on each part. This will bring out the dragon's scales, all the various details, and everything. Then, just to add a little bit more interest, I always like to do basing on all of these miniatures. They make them look that much better. 
In this case, I was trying to find something you'd be able to find nearby, so I actually found some sand outside and just kind of sifted out some of the bigger portions and put on some PVA or wood glue to the base and sprinkled sand on all the bases. Then I wiped off around the outside edge so it'd have a clean black edge on the base. If you do get basing material on the rim, I suggest you wipe it off if you can. If it wound up being paint or something, use one of your colors in order to paint the brim a nice solid color again. It makes the entire piece pop a little bit more, and even if you did what you think is a bad paint job, it really makes it look better. Now that wraps this project up, and hopefully this inspires you to try and paint some miniatures with only three colors yourself. But if you're looking to do a truly unique challenge in which you have zero control over what miniatures you'll be painting and what paint colors you're going to get, then be sure to get one of these kits from zeppelincomics.com. And whether or not you think you're any good at painting these kinds of things, as long as you try and put in the effort, people will be able to tell, and that's kind of what makes these look good. And as long as you're happy, that's all that matters.